as the Bobcats kick away to begin quarter number three. Fielded at the six-yard line by Northwest. And taken out with a hole across the 25 to about the 27-yard line. That's where the Texans will begin first and ten. As we take a quick look at scores from around the district, halftime scores. Keller, 10. Timber Creek, nothing at halftime. Eaton trails Trinity, 14-7. And South Lake Carroll has a big lead over Hurst LD Bell, 35-7. Approaching halftime there as well. District 4-6A coming down to the home stretch. Two games left after tonight. And in this game, the winner doesn't necessarily clinch a, a postseason spot. And the loser isn't necessarily eliminated. But a lot on the line as these teams try to figure out who will be the four of the nine teams continuing their season beyond week 11. First and 10 for the Texans. As they start on the ground, Nate Jean off right side, a flag comes in on the line of scrimmage. And that six yard run is probably coming back on a hold. Yeah, another good run there from Jean though. I mean, I know, like you said, probably coming back. I'm sure everyone looks good with a hold on a run, but I, they had some success on that last drive of the first half the Texans did. I think they got to get back to it. Uh, score again, 14-7 to if you're just joining us here for the second half. As a couple of touchdown runs from Anthony Sexton and a touchdown run from Nate Jean have kind of been all the scoring in what's been a little bit lower scoring matchup than I think we expected, Cameron. Yeah, no scoring in the first quarter at all. Byron Nelson blocking a punt early in the second quarter and cashing it in right away. An 18-yard run by Sexton on a, that would end up being a one-play drive. Hand off to Nate Jean again as uh, Northwest tries first and 20. And they get a little bit. They get second down and a little bit more manageable, but they're still behind the chains on this first drive of the third quarter. With Slade Lee, I'm Cameron Songer. Skyler Gillespie is our Vipe Live QA. Tip of the cap as well to Suna Venkat. Product manager at Vibe Live helping us get rolling here this evening on a gorgeous night from Northwest ISD Stadium in Justin, Texas. Last weekend in October, and the kickoff temperature 82 degrees. As Ryder Norton flings a screen pass complete to the left side, but the Bobcat defense all over it, stacked up right near the line of scrimmage, and then Jacobin Julian finishing it off, a gain of just four. And it sets up a third down and 11 for the Northwest offense. Need to get it up to the 39 to move the chains. Yeah, and Cameron, I mean, again, just how many times have we said Jacobin Julian tonight? That, that guy has been all over the field. Just a big reason why seven is the only number that the Texans have so far. They're doing a really good job slowing, slowing down the offensive attack for Northwest. Third down and 11, 10.30 to go, third quarter. Three down line, but Julian will blitz. Four-man rush as Norton steps up, fires towards the sideline, incomplete. He was trying to find Keegan Wells, led him a little too far out of bounds, and it's a three and out for the Northwest Texan offense. Bobcats are the home team tonight. Northwest, even though this is the stadium that's as close to their campus as possible, they're the visiting team. One of some of the joys of sharing a district stadium here in Northwest ISD. As is a high snap, Byron Nelson blocked one punt tonight as Trey Poe gets this punt away. It's fair caught at about the 45-yard line. Good starting field position after the catch by Ryan Ippolito, and we'll see the Byron Nelson offense for the first time here in quarter number three. Yeah, and again, the Byron Nelson offense, not quite as high-flying a night as I think a lot of teams, or a lot of, a lot of people may have thought going into the game. Um, again, a couple of touchdown runs from Anthony Sexton. Been doing a good job on the ground. But Bizjack, he had a moment earlier in the first half where he kind of acted like his hand was hurting after a hit. We'll see if that continues to give him a hard time. Just 108 offensive yards in the first half for Byron Nelson. They start with the handoff left side Robinson. Didn't look like there was much for him, but he scooted across the 50-yard line for a gain of about six. Not a bad carry right there from Robinson. 12 carries, 69 yards in that first half, and just 39 yards through the air for what's been a pretty high-flying Byron Nelson offense so far this season. 9.50 to play, third quarter. Here's second down and four. And the handoff right side, Robinson. Looks like enough for a first down. So 14-7 lead for Byron Nelson as they have a first and 10. Yeah, good run 
Good run again from Robinson. Robinson doing a good job here as we as we keep going throughout this uh, throughout this second half. I'm sure they'll want to lean on him some more. All day for Bizjack on uh, first down. Flushed out to the left, now has to just get rid of it. And tosses it into the bench. Great job to hold those blocks up front, but really good coverage on the back side by Northwest. Yeah, good job. Good job on coverage again. And, and really, I know we talked about it some in the pregame, Cameron. The secondary for the Texans have, has done really a pretty phenomenal job slowing down Bizjack in the offense. The Almanza brothers haven't really called their name a ton tonight. I, it, it's been a really good job in coverage from the Texans. It's just the run game that's kind of hurting them. Second and ten. Bizjack off a play fake. Zips a pass over the middle and it's incomplete. Too hot to handle for Ryan Ippolito, but he had to get that ball out as pressure was coming in his face. 9-16 to go third quarter. Third and 10 upcoming for Byron Nelson. They lead Northwest 14-7. to Yeah, and again, Bizjack clearly not showing any issues with that hand on that throw. Really kind of let it go. Put some, put some good mustard on that one and we'll see what he does here on third and 10. Receiver's right, one on the left. Corner showing blitz here for Northwest. Snap, pressure comes. Bizjack flushed out to the right, needs to get rid of it. Fires, incomplete. He was looking for Leo Almanza. Check that, he was looking Dimitri for Schmidt, Schmidt, I believe, yeah. yeah. yeah Almanza yeah. was all the way upfield. And again, Almanza kind of alone behind the safeties there. Maybe, obviously, Bizjack had to kind of roll and get out of there pretty quickly as the pocket collapsed, but... Might have had Almanza deep downfield right there. So nothing doing for Byron Nelson on their first offensive drive of the third quarter. Out comes the punt team. Kick is away. Straight to the return man who fields it inside the 20. Does not get back out to the 20-yard line. As looks like that was David Taylor trying to make something happen. And good coverage by the Gunners in black. Nine minutes to play in quarter number three. 14-7 lead for Byron Nelson. As this low-scoring kind of slugfest of a contest continues. Scoreless after one. All three touchdowns coming on the ground over the course of the second quarter. But neither team can really find any traction here in quarter number three. But we've only played three minutes late. Yeah, I mean, to your point, though, it's kind of kind of offensively been a little bit of a clunky game from both sides. Kind of defense is really holding stiff. First down snap. Norton. Fires. Pass is complete. This is Singer, who spins away from a tackle. Gets down short of the 30-yard line to about the 26. Gain of about 7 on the play. Yeah, and I, I think that's how Northwest makes this game a lot more interesting, as if, if uh, Norton can throw the ball more. Two receivers left. One on the right. Second down and two. Eight and a half minutes to play third quarter. Trying to drive and tie this game if you're Northwest. Down 14-7. The snap. Oh, the ball's on the turf. Picked up. And Norton just has to slide down. All kinds of problems there trying to exchange quarterback to running back. And Northwest, that's their third fumble of the day that they've recovered their own fumble. Yeah, and, and frankly, about if I'm not wrong, the second or third snap that's been kind of bobbled. And again, kind of all fortune turning up for the Texans so far is really the only play that they've had like a major miscue on is the block punt it, it, and there's been a lot of potential for the Bobcats to have had a lot of balls on the turf third down and five give it to Gene trying to stretch it outside hit in the backfield trying to keep the legs churning I think he might have done it wow what a great second and third effort by Nate Gene yeah. that moves the chains for a Texan first down and there are bodies down injured players on both sides yeah Kobe Wall and I'm not sure I can't quite tell what number that is I believe it's 26 for the Byron Nelson Bobcats they they met on a block leading the way for Gene there they I mean both sides just big hit there so while those players get attended to we can take a look at some other scores from around the district how about this into the third quarter Trinity 14 Eaton 14 and again Eaton Eaton's again they, they've played every team in the district close they, they're right there to turn in a corner and a win tonight against a strong Trinity team makes things 
pretty interesting going into the later half of the season, especially if this one remains a Byron Nelson victory. Again, I mean... The, the problem for Eaton, though, is that they've already played both of these teams and already lost to both of these teams, and... Uh, really, the only thing that would be left for them to hope for is that Trinity falls to, to, to even to them at 4-4 four and four because they can't win a tiebreaker with Northwest and they can't win a tiebreaker with Byron Nelson. Uh, yeah, but, I mean, for Eaton, again, Trinity, kind of the last of the, again, as we've kind of said, the we talked a little bit in the pregame of the upper echelon of the kind of the what seemed to be the most likely playoff teams, a win against Trinity... And then Eaton just has to take care of business against Keller Timber Creek, and all of a sudden there's there's a route to five and three if they can beat beat Trinity here. There there is a a feasible path to get there, and again that that five win number is kind of the magic number. That to your point, maybe maybe they wouldn't win a tie break with Northwest, but it, it would make it make things very interesting if they could pull off this upset against Trinity. And the other game we're keeping an eye on, Keller has opened up a three-score lead over Timber Creek, 17-0. And that would do a lot of favors for both of these teams uh, we're watching here tonight. As the Byron Nelson player who was shaken up was Manny Malumba. He was able to walk off the field under his own power. There's still a Northwest player down, and while he gets uh, a look, we'll step aside here on Vipe Live.
All right, following a, a scary moment there as uh, one of the Northwest players, uh, Kobe Wall, had to be carted off the field. We're back 7.35 to go, third quarter, and it's first and ten for the Northwest offense with Slade Lee. I'm Cameron Songer here on Vipe Live. Byron Nelson has a 14-7 lead, early third quarter still, as Ryder Norton hands off up the middle, Gene with a hole, first down yardage and more as he's taken down to about the 46-yard line. Made a couple Bobcats miss and picks up a Northwest first down at the 46-yard line. Our thoughts and prayers with Kobe Wall after a, a scary moment. Both teams uh, taking a knee there for an extended period of time. Broken tackle in the backfield. Gene gets across midfield. He's down at the 49-yard line. Gain of five. And Northwest starting to show some signs on offense, like they're moving the ball against Slade. Yeah, Gene doing a good job running hard, running running low to the ground, and just continuing to be, like my dad used to say, like trying to tackle a fire hydrant. Not easy to do. <laughs> Second down and five. 6.40 to go, third quarter. Byron Nelson defending a seven-point lead. Play fake. Norton rolls to his right, fires, passes complete to the 40-yard line and upended. Enough to move the chains on the grab by Mason Fritz. Yeah, nice grab by Fritz right there. Really good job. First and 10 at the Byron Nelson 41-yard line as we approach the midway point in quarter number three. Neither team with success on offense before this drive as each team had, uh, well, I should say Northwest went three and out and Byron Nelson got one first down so far this half. This third quarter looking a lot like the first quarter. Just offense is stuck in the mud. Up till this drive, and then Northwest is starting to go in reverse. Uh, the false start penalty backs him up five yards. First half, uh, scoreless after one quarter. Byron Nelson blocked a punt early in the second quarter. And then on the ensuing play, an 18-yard touchdown run by Anthony Sexton, his first of two rushing touchdowns. First one came with 8.50 left in the second quarter. Second one came with a minute 14 left in the second quarter. But then a quick strike by Northwest on offense as their next drive took uh, less than a minute. It was punctuated by a three-yard touchdown run by Gene. Tough running there by Gene as he gets up the gets the penalty yards back plus one more. Sets up second down and nine. Yeah, I mean, it looked like they had Gene stacked up about six yards back where he wound up. That's... Just keep those legs churning and keep running. Really good job by Gene right there. 5.25 to go third quarter. Still a 14-7 lead for Byron Nelson. Northwest facing second down and nine. Snap Norton with a little bit of time. Steps up in the pocket. Fires to the right side. It's caught. Immediately swallowed up. And taken down is Gene. He's getting the ball any which way. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't blame him. He, he's, he's a great great option to kind of go to on offense and looks like he'll get spelled here for a moment by Carousella, the sophomore running back but we'll see what they draw up here pretty crucial third down Cameron is clock ticks under five minutes left to go here in the third and I would say four down territory here barring a big loss third down and three the line to gain is the Byron Nelson 31 play clock down to nine Norton out of a pistol formation gets the snap handoff straight up the middle off running in between the tackles not enough there for Sella got some of it maybe half of the yards to gain it's fourth and a yard and no hesitation for the Northwest offense to stay on the field yeah they're gonna go right here as Gene comes back out and again quick thoughts and prayers out to Kobe Wall and hope he's able to be okay this is one of those moments where if you're Northwest you'd really like to have him on the field but obviously Unfortunately, going to have to go to go to the drawing board a little bit. Fourth and a yard. Four minutes left in the third quarter. Handoff. No doubt who was getting it, and Gene delivers. Great blocking off that left side. He needed a yard, fell forward, got three yards, and it's a first down for the Texans. Still trailing 14-7, but this drive has gone a long way, both in distance and in chewing up some clock and keeping this game 
Uh, moving and keeping the ball out of the hands of the explosive Byron Nelson offense. First and ten for Northwest. Norton keeping it all the way off left side. Tripped up in the backfield. Stays on his feet. Gets across the 25 to the 20. And that should be enough for another Northwest first down. If not, it's going to be just inches. Yeah, really good job putting that left foot in the ground by Norton there and cutting up field, doing a good job to turn what looked like it was going to be maybe no gain to a one yard or into about nine. 3.15 left in the third quarter. Second and one, ball on the Byron Nelson 20-yard line. They're on the edge of the red zone. What a drive this is for Northwest as it was interrupted by the big injury to Kobe Wall. They just come right back out and kept going. A handoff, right side, plenty of room. Inside the 10, what a run by, that time it was Sella. Sella, yeah. And, and again, Sella, that's, that's where one of Northwest's strengths Sella, Gene, Sadler, they've got three really strong backs as well. Not Again, both, both sides three deep at the running back spot, and Sella doing a good job there getting some good yardage. Got him down, but he got inside the 10 to the 7-yard line. First and goal, Northwest. Two and a half minutes left in the third quarter. A touchdown and a PAT would tie it. Norton on the rollout, fires to the end zone. It's tipped up in the air, and it's incomplete. Yeah, risky ball from Norton there going across body. Had a, had a look at a guy there, but a lot of a lot of black Bobcat jerseys there. Kind of risky throw. He was trying to find Trey Poe, who they lined up as a wide receiver there. Yeah, Poe po again, kind of a, one of those all-around guys as well. He, he plays some slot receiver. He's their backup quarterback. He handles the punting duties. Another one of those guys, uh, again, that does a lot. Second and goal from the seven. High snap. Norton hands it off. Tough tackle there. Good job to wrap up as Andrew Thompson made sure there was nothing there. Got him down to the four-yard line. Third and goal at the four. Byron Nelson's red zone defense trying to hang on to that seven-point lead. 14-7 Byron Nelson. What can Northwest do with two minutes left in the third quarter? Third and goal at the four-yard line. Taking their time here, huddling up. Play clock still showing 16 seconds. Four yards to go here. I think they'll take a timeout and talk this one over again. One of those situations where, you know, they, they've, they I've seen a number of times, we've called a number of Northwest games here, where this is Kobe Wall territory. And again, I hate to keep mentioning it, and we'll probably try to step away from that, but a huge injury to Kobe Wall earlier on this drive, and... Again, just hope he's doing okay and hope the best for the young man and his team trying to do, do their best to get a win in his honor as the night goes on. Yeah, they loaded him up into the ambulance over there in the corner. I don't think they've, the, the ambulance has left yet, but I, I know that you know the, the medical staff taking a, a, a good look at him, making sure he's okay. And again, all we can do is send our best wishes to, to him and to his family as uh, the offense tries to find itself without... Uh, a key playmaker. I mean, Kobe Wall, you talk about what he's been able to do. Uh, really was a key player in in a tough game last week against South Lake Carroll. Had a rushing touchdown, five catches, 42 yards last week. He's totaled five touchdowns on the year and over 400 yards just through the air. And, and this is a Northwest team that's not really known for passing the ball a lot. They, they really lean on that ground game last week, even though they lost to Carroll. Uh, called twice as many runs as passes, and they come out in a kind of a heavy set here. Fake the sweep. Toss towards the end zone. That ball picked off. There's a flag down. But the interception thrown as Norton zipped one towards the goal line. And the officials might have been whistling this play dead first. It might have been a false start. Yeah, and that, frankly, would be the best case scenario for the Texans there. Is that was kind of a nightmare nightmare uh, play on third and goal. Byron Nelson insisting that they can decline the penalty and take the result, but I think a, a false start means that the, the play is dead before it actually happens and they, they allowed the play to continue. Let's just see. Uh, all, the Nor uh, all the Byron Nelson players hanging out around the ref saying it should be our ball at the one-yard line. Yeah, no kidding. All, literally all 11 within... Within shouting distance, while. and it looks like they're going to give it to him. Wow, the takeaway at the goal line, the interception by Byron Nelson. So it's an illegal formation, not a false start. Let's see if we can get another look at that interception. I'll put the ball down at the one yard line here. A huge takeaway from the Byron Nelson defense right there, doing a great job of 
just getting in the way of that there. And yeah, they've got 99 yards to march. Don't, don't get me wrong. They're still not entirely out of the woods here. But, again, keeping Northwest on what looked like a drive that they were going to tie this game up. Yeah, the guy who handed the ball to the official was 35, Bell. Let's see who actually picked that off. So As 36. That's oh, awesome. big hole for Sexton off left side. He stays in bounds, and it's a foot race. He's across midfield, stiff armed out of bounds to the 40 yard line. It's a gain of 58 on the play for Anthony Sexton, who's having a monster night. Yeah, huge run from Sexton right there. And like you said, uh, we talked about it a little bit earlier. Once he gets past that first wave, Sexton's speed is just unreal. He's he's able to put that foot in the ground and go. Really good run right there. As, oh. And they'll mark him out at the 41. So, yeah, just just an even 60. Yeah. Nice nice round. Or, uh, oh, no, 58. 58. Math. Math oh, is yeah, hard. Yeah. Keep it with Sexton. Not 58 there. It's, it's about four. Minute 30 to go, third quarter. 14-7 lead for Byron Nelson. But how about the, the change in momentum? After, again, the, the scary injury, the long stoppage, Northwest marched down the field, threw the pick at the one-yard line, and Byron Nelson comes out on the first play, picks up 50-plus, moves right into Northwest territory, and now trying to put their foot down and reclaim a two-possession lead. They keep it on the ground with Sexton. Not quite enough for a first down. It'll be third down and inches. I wouldn't be surprised if they go to Sexton again right here. Just lower the shoulder and keep... Or no, they will move the chains, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Either way, I wouldn't be surprised if it's a steady dose of Sexton and Robinson. Yeah, Sexton will get a breather after all the work he's done on this drive. First and 10 for Byron Nelson. They do need to run at least one more play here before the third quarter comes to a close. Bizjack out of the shotgun, gets the low snap, gives it to Robinson. Burst of speed as he gets past the line of scrimmage and tackled at the 26-yard line for a gain of five. Yeah, I got through that defensive line. Looked like a hot knife through butter, the way he kind of just shot through there. Good job by the linebacker core not to let that turn into a huge play. So 10-second difference between the play clock and the game clock. We have a whistle, no whistle, just the coaches on the field as the Byron Nelson coaching staff decided we'll get ready for the fourth quarter. Three quarters in the books. Byron Nelson 14, Northwest 7 here from Northwest ISD Stadium and Vipe Live. Start of the fourth quarter here from Northwest ISD Stadium. Byron Nelson with the ball and a 14-7 lead. Handoff Robinson stood up in the backfield. Not much room to operate, and Byron Nelson's offense will face a third down and medium. With Slade Lee, I'm Cameron Songer, Skyler Gillespie, our QA, back at Mission Control. A low-scoring defensive slugfest, but Byron Nelson has not trailed. And they're looking to go up by two scores again. Third and five from the Northwest 26-yard line. Texans all up along the line of scrimmage showing blitz. Bizjack out of the shotgun, gets the snap. Hands off to Robinson. He's met in the backfield and tackled for a loss. Nothing doing there as Hudson Lehman met him and tackled him for a loss of a few. And a decision now for the Byron Nelson offense. It looks like they're staying on the field. This would be a pretty long field goal, so 
They're going for it here. Fourth and seven. 11 6 to play in tonight's contest. And again, this will be a huge stop for Northwest on the other side. Again, kind of the, the air kind of sucked out of the stadium following the Kobe Wall injury. This will be a good chance to get the momentum back on your side and really get a chance to drive down the field again. Two receivers left. Two on the right. Biz Jack out of the shotgun. Play fake. Doesn't have much time. Flings it to his running back out of the backfield, and he's not going to get anywhere close to the sticks. Yeah. Robinson was sort of just left out to dry there as David Taylor delivering the punishment. And again, the if there's one group for Northwest that has played just flat-out, lights-out football, it has been the secondary. They Harrington, David Taylor, Caden Olson, just a number of different guys. Hudson Lehman, another one, one of those defensive backs. Just flying around, putting helmets on the ball, and doing a great job really limiting this, this high-flying Bobcat offense. 10.39 to play. Trailing 14-7, the Northwest offense takes over once again. Put a man in motion, and it's Ryder Norton in at quarterback. Hands off. Gene looking for a cutback. Good tackle by the ankles there. And there wasn't a lot, ultimately. Tackle by number 36, Nolan Hawkins, the freshman. Yeah, and the freshman with that interception down near the goal line, he's been active tonight, Hawkins has. Second down snap. Time in the pocket. Pass is complete near the line to gain as Tyler Singer is tackled immediately. And I think they're going to give him forward progress to the spot he needed at the 38-yard line. It is first down northwest, so stop the clock. 10.02 left in the fourth quarter. Nice job by Singer there. Expect Singer to get a lot bigger role here down the stretch, especially if they have to start throwing the ball more, as he's probably their next best pass catcher. 14-7 lead for Byron Nelson in this all-Northwest ISD showdown. They go Singer's way again right on that comeback route near the line to gain. And should be enough for another first down. Oh, they're going to say the forward progress a little bit short. Really nice catch there from Singer either way. Nice, nice job going up and getting that ball and bringing it in. So second down and two for the Northwest offense. Handoff. Gene, he fights his way past defenders into plus territory. First down, Texans. And don't look now, but Northwest rolling a little bit. Yeah, and Cameron, I don't know about you, but I don't know that Nate Gene knows how to fall backwards. <laughs> Man, he is just always falling forward, always keeping that momentum rolling, and just a true ground and pound back. 9-10 to play in this fourth quarter. Down by seven, Northwest looking for the tying score. This time Gene met right behind the line of scrimmage, falls forward to the line of scrimmage, and there is a flag down. Yeah, I know it's not what the flag's going to be for, but a couple of receivers for Northwest and defensive backs for the Bobcats. About 10, 15 yards downfield tangled up, kind of taking a tumble on the ground as things getting a little bit chippy here between the two Northwest schools as that'll move the ball up for they call a face mask on the defense, so 15 yards, the automatic first down. Northwest setting themselves up for the equalizing score. We said that not long ago, and they threw a pick at the one-yard line. So it's about taking advantage of opportunities because the Northwest defense has done its job tonight. Keeping Byron Nelson at just 14 points so far. Norton off a play fake. Lines up, fires a deep ball towards the end zone, let his man too far. No flag, incomplete pass. Terrible looking ball there from Norton. Didn't, didn't quite get it there, but not a bad looking ball. Is I like the idea to take a shot there. Stretch the defense a little bit. They're starting to crowd the box a little bit. You know, we talked talked earlier in the game. Byron Nelson was kind of playing only three down in front. Three, three, five kind of front on defense. Now they're starting to crowd the box a little bit. It's a four down lineman. Kind of a four, two, five look. Take a shot. It's a good adjustment. Poe is the motion man. They give it to Gene behind the block, and he's taken down short of the 30 at the 31-yard line, a gain of just a yard. Do want to uh, go back on that last pass play, tip the cap uh, to Jesse Cabea, who had good coverage uh, all the way upfield as Ryder Norton had some time to really find an open man, but good man-on-man -man coverage on the outside there. 
So it'll be third down and nine. 8.20 to go in this fourth quarter. Byron Nelson with the 14-7 lead. And we got coaches coming out of the field. That usually means someone called timeout. Still trying to see who called that timeout. There's not an injury on either side. I believe. Okay, we have a, uh, a stoppage because someone in the stands blew a whistle and the official is saying, you can't do that. Yeah, no, no timeout. <laughs> they kind of call both teams out of their respective huddles and just about everything you can see in a high school football game so far, Cameron. <laughs> uh, both teams will be happy with that, basically a free timeout because this is a crucial third down and nine play. Snap. Norton immediately pressured, fires the screen pass complete to the far side. Broken tackle by Singer, but he's not even going to get back to the line of scrimmage. Just swarming to the ball, the Byron Nelson Bobcats. He made one guy miss, and Jacob and Julian, but that was it. Yeah, but still, I mean, Julian doing a great job on that. Really kind of blew up the play. As soon as he saw, saw Norton pull back, he immediately cut back out to the receiver and did a great job to kind of be first contact and slow things down if they're going to go for it here. Fourth and 11, 7.43 to go in this ball game, trailing by seven as the Northwest offense looks for something. Three receivers on the left, one on the right. Ten on the play clock for Norton. Just three down linemen, but four-man rush. Norton steps up, breaks the initial contact, flag comes in, he slides down short of the line to gain, took a hit at the end, he's down bodies all over the place just the one flag thrown in the area of holding and he didn't have enough on the carry anyway Byron Nelson defense gets off the field yeah and he, he's actually somewhat shaken up himself they'll take a look at him on the sideline here and penalty on the Texans anyways and that's a huge stop for the Bobcats again as only seven minutes or so left to go here in the game and again it'll, it'll be interesting to see how can the Texans defense make one more stop again? You, you tell pretty much every team in the district outside of maybe South Lake, and, and I think even if you told South Lake, hey, you're going to hold Byron Nelson to 14, they'd be really thrilled. And, and if I was a coach, I would be too. This Byron Nelson offense is 14 is maybe their season low. I could be could be mistaken. Certainly there. feels like it's a trickeration on the reverse to Leo Almanza, and he's got a head of steam out. Across the 40-yard line, more than enough for a Byron Nelson first down as their offense looks to reestablish an elusive rhythm. 7.13 to go in this fourth quarter. Here's the, here's the bigger picture for Byron Nelson, right? You, you're focused on this game, right? But zoom out a little bit. They've got two more games left after this one against Bell and Central, the two last place teams in the district. You assume you win those. You're already on a, a three-game winning streak. So you win this one. You win those last two. You enter the postseason on a six-game winning streak. That's a lot of momentum even if it hasn't always been pretty, because it hasn't been pretty here tonight, as the patch made by Ippolito as he looked for a block on the outside, didn't get much, but did get positive yards and sets up a second down and short. Yeah, and, and you know, Cameron, you make a good point there. I, I think something that maybe this Byron Nelson team did not have last year is ugly wins. U ugly wins can be what really galvanizes the team. You know, they did lose to South Lake. They did lose a tough game here earlier in the season, again, three-point game to Euless Trinity. I think that kind of hit them in the mouth. It, it kind of made them wake up and realize we got to we gotta come together as a team. And as Sexton takes the ball there on the carry. And needed two. I don't think he even got one. It'll be third down for the Byron Nelson offense. 6.20 to play in this ball game, up 14-7. And the way their defense has been playing... You, you feel like you need points on this drive just because Northwest has had success offensively and and, North, and Byron Nelson's defense has been on the field an awful lot. Yeah, yeah, I mean, defense has definitely got to be tired at this point. Again, they've kind of gotten a couple of breaks here and there, but to your point, I, I have to think if the Texans get one more shot, it's going to come to pay dirt. We, we saw a score late in the first half. Wouldn't be surprised if we see another score from the Texans late in the second half. Play clock got down to one, and the Byron Nelson coaching staff calls timeout, making sure they have the right play call in here on third down and two. Stoppage gives us a chance to look at scores around the district, keeping an eye on three other games in District 4-6-8 tonight. Southlake Carroll's 
Uh, still at halftime, I believe, against Hurst LD Bell, 35-7. No surprises there. The Dragons set to clinch the district title. Trinity starting to pull away from Eaton. They're in the fourth quarter there, 33-14. And uh, this one, really surprised at how this one's not competitive. Keller, 31. Timber Creek, nothing. Uh, just based on the standings, that's a little bit of a surprise. But you think about how these teams played Byron Nelson this year, it's uh, not as much of a surprise, right? Keller really stuck with Byron Nelson and made a very close game, whereas Byron Nelson really stifled Timber Creek. What that is is it's great news for Northwest because Northwest has already beaten Keller. They still have to play Timber Creek, and they played that game at Timber Creek in the last week of the regular season. It would be great if Northwest is approaching that game from a situation where they've already clinched and Timber Creek is already out because, as we've seen, injuries, this, this attrition is starting to hit Northwest, especially with the, it looked like Norton was a little shaken up leaving that play, and they, uh, Kobe Wall leaving the stadium in an ambulance here tonight. So, uh, yeah, a, a tough a tough situation for Northwest with uh, a, a gauntlet down the home stretch of their schedule. But they're still in this one. Trying to get a stop on third down and short. They're not going to have it as Parker Almanza galloping towards the end zone. Bizjack found him, and he takes it all the way to the house. Touchdown, Byron Nelson. Yeah, really good play right there as... Bizjack saw the house blitz coming, found the hot route in Parker Almanza. And Almanza, he, he's a little bit bigger guy. He's kind of more of that tight end build than maybe his brother Leo. But, man, when he gets ahead of steam, he can move down the field pretty quick too. As That's another guy that will most likely be playing on Saturdays here pretty soon like his brother. Yeah, the junior tight end going 50 yards untouched. And that's... Uh, a huge score with 5.37 left in the fourth quarter. Byron Nelson 21, Northwest 7 after the extra point was good. And you start to wonder now what Northwest has to do uh, to, to find two touchdowns just to tie this game up. Um, I, I, I don't hate the call defensively for Northwest. You've, you've caused havoc defensively. They brought pressure. And, and then there was no one left to deal with Parker Almanza. A great read by Bizjack delivered it. And, and Bizjack, uh, Bizjack with the touchdown pass to, I think at this point, double his passing yards on the night. It's been, it's yeah. been tough sledding there. Uh, but Parker Almanza, happy to see as we get another look. Uh, the snap, just enough time for Bizjack, throwing off his back foot. And the junior tight end, Parker Almanza, outracing the defense, finding the end zone for Parker Almanza. Uh, that is touchdown number five on the year. The junior already has at least one FBS offer, and the way he's playing, they will continue to stack up. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he, he's, again, little brother of Leo Almanza going to Baylor. Not that being a little brother of a commit means you're necessarily going somewhere, but in the case of Parker, he will be. Low kick scooped up at the 11-yard line by Sella. Black jerseys come in. I think it's worth pointing out just uh, the, the struggles that Byron Nelson has had through the air. Obviously, Northwest keying on Leo Almanza, but uh, haven't called Ezra Malamura's name at all tonight. I think he's been out. Yeah, I have, I have not seen Malamura on the field tonight. Again, he's he's yeah. another one of those weapons for this yeah, the Byron Columbia Nelson Columbia commit is, uh, is a real, real weapon. And yeah. And, and he, he's been involved throughout the year. I, I know Ippolito's been handling a lot of the punt and kick return duties. He, he's been involved in that aspect, too. Again, we, we talk again about the Byron Nelson special teams, and not to say Ippolito hasn't done a good job, but you, you, again, you're missing a weapon not only in the receiving game, but on another aspect of the game. 5.31 to go, fourth quarter. Northwest looking for a quick reply. Norton on the pass towards the sticks, incomplete. He was looking for Singer, and it'll be second down and 10. 21-7 the lead for Byron Nelson. Again, they can't clinch a postseason berth with the win here tonight. And they'll get to four and two if this result holds. Four and two in the district, and six and two overall. Meanwhile, Northwest, if this result holds, would drop to four and two in the district, with a game against Trinity next week still looming. But bigger picture, some other results working out below these teams in the standings as Gene has a big hole and a gain of 11 for a first down. Yeah, nice run from Gene, and on the flip side of that coin, the Bobcats will 
for for a while will be more than fine with Gene running the ball as that keeps the clock rolling here closer to five minutes left in the game. 5-12 left to go in the ball game. With West, we saw last week they played from behind and often a big hole against South Lake Carroll. But they stuck with what they do, which is run the football. They were without Ryder Norton last week. Norton, the ball carrier there, gets three yards before he's swallowed up. Second down and seven coming up from their own 33-yard 30, line. As a... Uh, Fans starting to head for the exits here, maybe trying to beat traffic. Is and to me, it seems like you know you're really just one play away from this being a very, very compelling finish. Uh, but Norton firing here, that one a little underthrown, incomplete. Will be third and long. Yeah, and if if Northwest isn't able to score here, I, I think that's one maybe. If I was a fan, I might start walking towards the stands. But I mean, again, to your point, we're, this this game's far from over. Northwest can put up 14 in a hurry. Eh? And missing, missing maybe their top target and Kobe Wall maybe hurts those odds a little bit, but again, doesn't mean funnier things haven't happened. Got to get to the 40-yard line here. It's third and seven with 4.28 to go. Down by 14. Norton has some time, steps up in the pocket, throws over the middle, passes complete. First down and more down to the 48-yard line. Took a big hit, but held on to the football there. A good grab by Keegan Wells. Going off the hands. And yes. Ryder Norton showing the accuracy. He's up yeah. over 1,000 passing yards on the season now. Yeah, and when Norton really climbs up into that pocket and gets behind the throw, he's pretty good at finding his guy right where he wants. He's got some good accuracy. Four minutes left to play in this ball game. Norton against just a three-man rush. He's in trouble. He's swallowed up, and he is sacked. They'll give him forward progress back at the 40-yard line. But Jacobin Julian there was just waiting, kind of baited him to step to an area and then swallowed him up. Yeah, and, uh, I mean, again, I know, Cameron, you mentioned a few schools, UTEP, in there, and along with some others that Jacobin Julian's got offers from. And this this will be the type of game that you want to put on your huddle account, you want to put out there on Twitter. And take another look. Watch 13. He's just spying the quarterback, waits for him to move in the pocket, and then eats him up. Second down and 17, Norton. Time winding, winding down as there's a flag thrown back in the area of holding as looks like Byron Nelson getting pressure and forcing penalties even with just a three-man rush. Yeah, Cameron, that, that's going to be a hold. I can, I, that right tackle doing his best to kind of seal the edge there but kind of turned it into a little more of a body slam than a block. <laughs> Yeah. Julian continuing the uh, line of, of defenders from this Byron Nelson program. Last year sent four of their defensive players to FBS schools, uh, four seniors. Just a really remarkable, uh, again, a remarkable season last year. They went undefeated in the regular season. They won the district for the first time in school history. And not going to be able to replicate that this year with the two district losses to South Lake Carroll and Trinity. But uh, don't... Don't ever sleep on Byron Nelson, even if they might have a, a tough first-round postseason matchup against what looks like it might be North Crowley, as this second down and very long pass falls incomplete. So it'll be third down and 27. Don't see that every day, as we have now 2.54 to go in the fourth quarter. Byron Nelson 21, Northwest 7. Three straight nine-win seasons for this Bobcat program. The win tonight would be win number seven for them. Assuming they take care of business against the two bottom teams in the district in the last weeks, they would have a, uh, an eight-win regular season. And again, absolutely nothing to scoff at. Going eight and two in a tough district. Yeah, no, Deep no shot. Kidding. Incomplete. Yeah, no kidding about that. You mentioned going eight and two in this district again. We, we've talked about it all throughout the season, Cameron. A, a strong claim to one of the toughest districts in Texas, if not the toughest district in, te in Texas. You, you've got South Lake, who, uh, again, I, there's there's such an easy way to see 15 and 0 state champion South Lake Carroll Dragons. You, you've got a Byron Nelson team who could very well go eight and two and be. 
a very tough out. Again, like you mentioned, it seems plausible. Ooh, low snap. Poe does a good job to boot it away. This is fourth and 26, so yeah, you can look at it and say we're down two scores. It's the fourth quarter, 240 left. Northwest might not see the ball again, but fourth and 26 is fourth and 26. Yeah, you don't really have a play in the playbook for fourth and 26, and if you do, it's on that written on the back of that page, maybe a McDonald's napkin from after a road trip somewhere. And, and if you do, maybe now's not the time to break it out. Maybe you save it for a time when it might actually, frankly, it might not swing the game here. No, and, and to your point, we're close enough to playoff time, not not to say either of these teams are guaranteed locks. I, I would say Byron Nelson most likely will be if they can finish this win off here, but it, it, it's something where... If you're Northwest, you want to save that. To your point, if that Keller Timber Creek game becomes a lot more critical late in the season, if maybe that first round playoff matchup, you got a, a situation like that where you need that. Like you said, don't don't show all your cards here just to win a game that you don't really need to win. It's Leo Almanza catches the screen pass. He gets spun down. Parker Almanza threw a nice block on the edge to allow Big Bro to even have a chance to make something happen there. And there's a flag down. 2.28 left in the fourth quarter. Byron Nelson with the ball in the 21-7 lead. Face mask on the defense. That's an automatic first down. And again, keeping a, keeping one eye on the district scoreboard, it looks like Keller's probably going to hang on. They're up 34 nothing over Timber Creek, and Eaton looks like they'll probably fall to Trinity. Here's what that sets up. It means Eaton will be 2-4 and four in district. Timber Creek will be 2-4 and four in district. And Keller will be 3-4 and four in district. Next week, Eaton plays Timber Creek in an elimination game. That is straight up an elimination game. And uh, what it means is uh, Northwest will be pulling hard for Eaton because Northwest can, uh, even if Northwest fought, finishes 4-4, four and four, if they don't win another game, Timber Creek would cannot get to 4-4 four and four if they lose tonight and they lose next week. And if Eaton does indeed finish 4-4, four and four, Northwest has the tiebreaker over Eaton. And Northwest has the tiebreaker over Keller. So you, Northwest is going to watch that Eaton game next week with a very close eye. Yeah, either way, they're going to be watching it with a close eye. The the thing that throws the wrinkle in there, Cameron, and, and we'll try to get another update on that Eaton-Trinity game. If Eaton pulls the upset against Trinity, there is a way that they can go 5-3. Five to five and three. Doesn't look like that's going to happen as it's 33-14. to 14. Trinity's leading Eaton right now. It, it was 14-14 to 14 at one point earlier. That's why I mentioned that. But, again, uh, it, it's to your point now looking like Eaton going to hopefully kind of seal the deal for Northwest to make the playoffs regardless of how they play out. Again, the, the, only, the only possible chance then would be uh, if for, for Timber Creek is that Timber Creek would need to beat Eaton next week and then beat Northwest in the last week of the season uh, because if if Northwest and Timber Creek are the only teams that finish 4 and 4 and Timber Creek has the head to head then yeah then Timber Creek would get in over Northwest which Byron Nelson would like because it would drop Byron Nelson to the D2 playoffs which anything to get away from North Crowley right <laughs> <laughs> yes yes we know uh, we know South Lake Carroll is going to go is going to be in the playoffs and they're going to be in the D2 playoffs we know Trinity uh, if if they win tonight and Keller wins tonight, then Trinity will be in the playoffs in D1. Then all that's left to figure out is where would Byron Nelson be? Because they, they are basically clinching here with a win tonight. They, they don't formally clinch because they would have to win one of their last two games. But again, the two teams they're playing in their last two weeks of the regular season haven't beaten anybody else in the district but each other. So Byron Nelson... Again, uh, Northwest just called their last timeout. It's a minute 50 left, and, and Northwest will need this third down stop, trailing 21-7. Uh, Byron Nelson is a first down away from clinching this victory. Yeah, and Cameron, for, the, for those of the fans that maybe don't know why we keep bringing up Division One versus Division Two here, let me just read some of the scores from North Crowley's most recent games. <laughs> 67 to nothing over Fort Worth Boswell tonight. They've, that game has gone final. 62 to six over Weatherford. 66 to 7 over Mansfield Lake Ridge, 56 to nothing over Mansfield Legacy, 70 to 17 over Rockwall. They're pretty good. I don't want to. I don't want to face that in the no. first round, especially. Yes, and, and if you're telling me I'm facing that, you know, state semifinals, okay, you know, you're gonna face a good team in the state semis. First round, that's a tough draw. 
Well, especially for a Byron Nelson team that in a lot of state rankings is somewhere in the top 30 in the state as they have the first down. Great little gadget play. Handed it off to Frank McCong on the sweep. He picked up the first down and it looks like Byron Nelson will just be able to kneel this one out the rest of the way. He run, ran out of bounds. There's a minute 44 left, but Northwest doesn't have the ability to stop the clock anymore. And into the game comes Garrett Owen. As uh, Bizjack comes out, pat on the back, second to last home game for this senior class here, Byron Nelson taking care of business and, and proving uh, they're still the big dog in this district, in the Northwest ISD at least. Yeah, and I, th I think it goes without saying, you know, some some teams may wonder, or some fans may wonder, why, why is Byron Nelson pulling all their starters? It's just a kneel down. Anything can happen, and with what we saw tonight, again, thoughts and prayers out to Kobe Wall and his family. Hopefully he'll be doing all right as he left the game in an ambulance. Just the smart thing to do. You're up. The game's over. Get your starters out. Let them stay healthy, because like you said, at this point in the year, it, it it's a game of attrition. It's, it's not... It, it is who's the better team on any given night, but the war against just health and staying on the field is really coming into play as something that's critical. I mean, e even such a strong team like South Lake Carroll, four-star running back in Wormley, if I'm not mistaken, out for the season. And so, it, obviously, it helps when you have a second four-star running back in the stable, but every team, no matter what, how good or bad you are, is running into this at this point. There's the third kneel down. Northwest doesn't have the ability to stop the clock anymore, so there's still 30 seconds left on the clock, but that will do it. The Byron Nelson Bobcats, 21, the Northwest Texans nothing, as Byron Nelson goes 2-0 against Northwest ISD foes on the year. With the win, they improve to 6-2 overall, 4-2 in district. The loss drops Northwest to 6-2 overall and 4-2 in district. The tiebreaker, if there is a situation like that, would go Byron Nelson's way. Slade, a, a, a kind of confusing, disjointed game at times. You would think, okay, there were a lot of penalties. There were a lot of turnovers. That wasn't really the case. There was the one interception that Northwest threw on the goal line. Byron Nelson's first drive ended in a fumble. There were a handful of turnovers on downs. Really, it was just defense and tough football. Yeah, I mean, to your point, the, the turnover that really stands out, and I, I think when this Northwest team looks back at the film, that, that pick right at the one-yard line. And, and Norton, you, you can see it now. He kind of dropped to his knees a little bit and did a squat. He's frustrated with himself. That, that's a critical point in the game. It was 14-7 to at the time. Would have been the tying drive. And the, the, the tone of this game changes a lot if that doesn't get picked off. And so that, that's a huge play. Really probably the play of the game. But... Again, for Nor for Northwest, not a bad showing. Again, you tell most every team in 6A, you're going to hold Byron Nelson to 21. And a lot of teams probably think that means they pulled off an upset. Because like you said, Byron Nelson is one of the top 30 teams in the state. Not the case here tonight, as the offense just really couldn't get going. A really great job again. want to give one more shout-out to Jacobin Julian. Just a, a monster game on defense. Yeah, the 21 points ties the lowest that Byron Nelson has scored this season. Uh, South Lake Carroll held him to 21 in the district opener. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, a really a, a gritty game of football. And uh, Byron Nelson did just enough to win. I mean, even if it wasn't uh, explosive offensively, they did enough to win. They've set themselves up really nicely their last two games uh uh, at Bell next week and then hosting Central in what will just be at that point uh, a formality because they'll have already clinched a playoff spot. Northwest, they host Trinity next Friday at 7. A big game. The winner of that one clinches a, a playoff spot and the loser, if it's Northwest, could could see themselves playing uh, basically a, a play-in game in the final week of the regular season. That would be at Timber Creek in the regular season finale. So uh, a really exciting home stretch. Two more weeks of the regular season, 
And uh, some great games coming up next week here on Vipe Live from Northwest ISD. Timber Creek at Eaton is our Thursday game. Mentioned it briefly earlier. That is a straight-up uh, elimination game. If, yeah. you, if you lose that game, your chances of reaching the playoffs are zero. If you win that and game, it, your chances are still really, really slim. But it's it's an elimination game. And, and, and to your point, frankly, for I, I would say really Eaton and Timber Creek, but at this point, Timber Creek really the only other team that I think can get there in terms of the playoffs. Playoffs start now. It It, it is win or go home every week going forward. You got to be Eaton. And then you got to take care of business against Northwest on their home field. That that will be out here on the last week of the season. The Timber Creek has to take care of business in these next two weeks against Northwest ISD schools. Yeah. Other games in the district next week. Carroll is at Central. Uh, Byron Nelson is at Bell, like we said. And uh, Trinity is at Northwest. That's our Friday game here on Vipe Live. So Northwest will be right back here on Friday night. Uh, we hope to see you there. One more time, the final score here tonight, Byron Nelson 21, Northwest 7. Big thanks to Vipe CEO Derek Dushek, Broadcast Director Merle Bertrand, Technical Director Suna Venkat, and Communications Director Christina Weber Bertrand. On behalf of my QA, Skylar Gillespie, and Broadcast Partner Slade Lee, this is Cameron Songer signing out from Northwest ISD Stadium. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend.